Hello. What you're seeing here isn't mine. It's a truck made by my friend Seps. It's missing the dualies he wants to eventually add to the rear wheels, but otherwise it's pretty impressive. A fully custom 3D fixtured body, plenty of detail and interesting design. And of course, it's a truck made in automation, so it's pretty unique as well. There's only one problem with it. It isn't amphibious. Let's change that. This could be pretty hard to do, but thankfully I won't be working alone. You see, a while ago some guy called Philman, you might have heard of him, commented on one of my videos. Having never done a collaboration before, I wasn't exactly sure what we would do exactly, so it took a month or two before we had a conversation that went something like this. Hi, I've decided to do an amphibious truck and I want to make it a 6x6. How hard is that to do in Beam? Well, first, don't. It's a nightmare. I mean, you did it. It can't be that bad. Uh, how much experience do you have? Uh, I broke the steering on a drift car like three years ago. Ha! Huh. How hard could it possibly be? And so I borrowed a truck from sets, and the next thing I knew, I found myself in automation again. There's plenty to do, but we start with the most important thing. The DFM TU250 day cab will henceforth be known as the Amphitruck TM. Then, since almost everything else I do follows from this, I go ahead and work out where I want all the axles to be. Unfortunately, because I need to extend the wheelbase, I also need to move a ton of fixtures, and the only way to get it all to line up is math. I use global movement to move every part of the rear axle, as well as some of the chassis, back about a hundred... well, whatever automation's units are. Unfortunately, this is basically the only time in the video I'll get to work with a nice round number like that. Sets likes to make detailed chassis, so this takes a while. While past me moves like a hundred fixtures in the background, I'd also like to make sure I'm giving Sets enough credit here. This video's title will state that it's a collab with Philman, which it is, but it's just as much of one, if not more, with Sets, who did more work than either of us. It is, after all, his truck we're modifying. He's just not in the title because, well, unlike Philman, he doesn't really do stuff on YouTube. Nobody's going to be clicking on this for Sets' name. In addition to the chassis, I also have to move the fuel tanks. There are actually a few other things to move, but we'll deal with that later. And probably mostly off-screen, because in what I am sure will be an unsuccessful attempt to get this video done before the holidays, given that I'm recording this line at 7pm on Christmas Eve Eve, that's going to be a tall order. I'm trying to edit this pretty fast by my standards. I fix a rare double typo sets made on the air filter, and then I take a break from 6 by 6 ification to retune the engine. No vehicle of mine will ever have under 400 horsepower. Here's a tip for retuning an engine in auto, by the way. Always swap it into a fresh car temporarily to do it. If you don't, every time you change a slider, even one tick, the game has to recalculate a bunch of powertrain stuff, as well as some other things, which makes it very tedious and frustrating to work on. I feel a little bit out of my element messing with engines and automation now. It's been a while since I've actually put any effort in. In the past I've been pretty upfront about my hatred of all the mechanical tuning in auto since I find it really boring compared to styling. But to be honest, I think I've come around a little. Maybe it's just because I'm always so burnt out on my high detail styling. There's a reason I'm not just building this truck from scratch. But it feels kind of nice to stare at a boring graph for 10 minutes or so. In any case, after a long period of fast forwarding, the engine ends up around 440 horsepower. Let's see how it sounds. Then I put the engine back in the Amphitruck and get back to all that painful fixture work. After I make the wheels a little bigger, they are after all supposed to be buoyant enough to theoretically make the whole truck float, I have to make some space. 
I moved the bumper out using essentially the same process as I did when moving the rear suspension backwards, and then I take that air filter box thing and move it out of the way as well. This of course takes far longer than it seems in the edit, but I don't want to show you the same thing over and over again because that is boring. I do actually end up doing some slightly different things for the intake piping because thanks to being moved it no longer lines up with the engine bay. So I have to pipe it to a random sealed hole in the cabin. It doesn't really matter past this point because pretty soon I'm going to be sealing the engine bay off. After all, you definitely don't need to have an easily floatable engine in your amphibious truck. In fact, that's what we're doing next. It was a bit of a challenge to wrap my brain around how the seal works because in a truck the cabin moves somewhat independently of the chassis, and the seal needs to connect to them both. Luckily, Sets is smarter than I, and he eventually manages to walk me through getting it to... Well, I mean, obviously it doesn't actually work, but it at least looks like it does. Basically, the bit attached to the body and the bit attached to the chassis overlap each other, and then they'd have some sort of sealy bit in between them so that they could move without letting water in. The seal on the bottom of the engine bay is incredibly easy, especially because there's almost no angle from which it is visible, so I needed absolutely no details. Next up is the dreaded front suspension, which Sets didn't do. Thankfully, I can be very lazy and just clone his rear suspension for the front. After more math, that's done, and although I have to give it a rudimentary steering linkage myself, it's not that bad. Then of course I do the same for the middle axle, which will also steer. I know 6x6 with two front steering axles is a bit unconventional, but so is an amphibious truck, so I can do what I want. I quickly paint the truck a more aquatic color, and then there's only one thing left, which is also, unfortunately, the hardest. Sets wasn't done with his truck when he sent the file to me, so he gave me only a very basic interior for scale referencing. If I want any actual detail, I've got to do it myself. Thankfully, he's done me a huge favor. Other than his insane need to lock every single fixture, which I have to unlock before I can move them, he's been very efficient with his design, and it's quite easy to modify it. Not to mention that since the whole truck is already made with 3D fixtures, I don't need to align any of the interior lining myself, I can just clone it all. There are a few minor issues caused by pretty much creating a shrunken copy of the entire cabin, particularly in the curves, but it's nothing compared to the absolutely masochistic 3D roof lining I did for my first voice commentaried car, so I'll live. I spent a fair amount of time trying to decide how I wanted the interior to look, but I eventually decided on this fairly simple idea. Basically, both sides of the dashboard are just made with grille fixtures, and the driver's side is a bit taller. Then I fill both of them in with fake wood, and add a bunch of pretty much randomly chosen gauges, vents, switches, and a radio to fill empty space. If they look like they're randomly placed, that's because they are. There comes a point in every build near the end where I sort of stop caring and just want to push through the last bits to get done. That point had probably arrived by now. Anyway, I recolored the interior to be less hideous, the previous colors were never going to be final, and then do some extraordinarily lazy door panels. Luckily this is an old truck, so they don't need to have any real detail. When looking for reference pictures I found door panels that were even more boring than this. And with that, we're done with auto. I'll take some photos, and then the really hard part begins. Right after export, this is what the truck looks like. It works just fine, and as you're about to see, it crashes very spectacularly. 
But it's not a 6x6 and it doesn't float, so although there's always Philman to fall back on, I'm going to give it a try myself. Largely because Philman doesn't want to do the extra axle. I don't know why, I mean, it doesn't seem that hard. So I spend the next day and a half working on J-Beam, that's Beam's main car file type for those who don't know, and while I manage to eventually add the extra axle, and I even get all six wheels driven eventually, things aren't going well. The wheels aren't actually really attached to anything, and my attempts to fix it are getting more desperate and less successful. So things aren't looking good. But then, just when all looks hopeless... Alright, let's see what we've got. A bit of a crash, but... Oh, okay, I see they don't have steering on the front axle. Does it move on its own? Oh. What the hell is that? Okay. They disappear if I don't look at the... What? Let's go ahead and turn the body invisible and see what we're working with. We have no front axle set up, unlike this. And the steering seems- wait, what? Hold on, what? Okay, here's front suspension, and here's front sus- there's- The front suspensions are in the tide of each other, what is happening? Uh, front suspension X. But, if we have a look, the one with all the X's on it is in the right place. It's this one that's not. So let's move the normal one, front suspension, forwards. Oh. Wow, this actually has to move quite a ways. Oh, the wheels are moving. The suspension is moving. The okay. Alrighty. Um... This is going to take a while to figure out. Alright, I'm going to stop recording now and I'm actually just going to knuckle down and fix this. I think I figured it out! <laughs> Finally! I could steer both wheels! It works gloriously! And I'm going to be honest, I don't know why this fixed it, but it did. On both of the current steering and the new steering, there was this line bit of code here for some reason to do more offset for just the steering specifically. And then the steering tried to be somewhere where it didn't want it. it was just, it was an issue. So you get rid of it, and then you can steer! Well, that's good to know. So yeah, it works now. Sort of. There are still a few problems with it, the main one being the engine, which stalls when you accelerate unless you put the game in slow motion. This makes for a generally horrible viewing experience, so I'm just going to be using the replay footage from now on because it plays at a normal speed regardless. The steering is way too big for a normal truck, which I could fix but won't, and it's too fast and handles horribly, but look, it's a 6x6 with two steering axles, and it somehow works. After I got it back from Filmin, it was time for me to make it buoyant. This is surprisingly super easy, there's a bit of code in the wheel J-beam which specifies the dimensions of the rim and tire without affecting the mesh. You don't want the overall size to get much bigger, but if you make the rims a lot smaller and then widen the tires it has the same effect. And it floats. Unfortunately, floating's about all it can do. Through R, by which I mean Philman's extensive testing, it seems like auto tires simply can't propel a car in water, so to get it to move or steer we'd need to add invisible Jado rockets. I, however, don't want to figure out how to do that, so we're just going to be limited to short river crossings in this truck. See that bridge up ahead? Most trucks would have to go over it, but not the Amphi truck. I mean, it might be completely useless on the other side, but at least it got there. I'll see about trying to post this to the Beam repository, because while I don't see why anyone would actually want to drive it, I'm sure someone will ask if I don't. For now, though, that's all I have for you, so 
Thanks for watching and goodbye.